Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the Europa League and Europa League Conference review. Well, we need to talk first before we go into the games uh, about two things. Barcelona, Dortmund, yeah, Atalanta and those Champions League teams, yes they are, but at the moment among the teams that I have and I don't have Le Leverkusen who would go between West Ham and Barcelona, those are the favorites. And of course, there are a lot of Champions League teams in there, but I decided, okay, for of all the teams that I have, let's put up uh, the current favorites uh, now after the group stage. And same goes here on the side, although I am very happy to say that the top three are still Europa Conference League teams uh, that started in, in the competition, uh, still are favorites to uh, win it. The second one is wardrobe choice. Lask won. Why I'm not wearing Lask? Because Lask was already already through. So I saw very little of the, of the game. I focused more on the uh, really interesting games. And the most interesting to me was Napoli against Leicester, where I actually was really invested because I wanted Napoli badly to go through. Hence, I decided I wear the Neapolitans. Uh, it was mostly, <laughs> I have to say, yeah, Milan fan here. <laughs> you see Milan behind me. Um, I was definitely more that I wanted to have an Italian team go uh, in over an English team and nothing against Leicester is probably one of the most likable English teams out there. But you know, I'm a Serie A fan and this was a big win for Serie A. Um, so first and foremost that. I do like Napoli overall, their team that I have sympathies for, a soft spot for if you like. And then there's a teeny smidgen of me that wanted Napoli to actually advance and maybe, I mean, they were secured more. No, not even that. But, you know, I could see that they will get a playoff spot. I want them to continue playing in Europe to have additional games that Milan do not have. So the little smidgen was in there. But that was not first and foremost on my mind. This is when I start thinking about it. Now, uh, because I'm wearing Napoli and because, you know, for me, last, the last game was kind of uh, secondary. Yes, I was very happy to see, 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 see them win. So for once, we'll do start in the Europa League because actually I thought that the action in the Europa League overall was the more interesting um, one. And so you see the results for um, groups uh, A through D here where basically I think Rangers were already uh, through, so uh, that didn't matter. Then was the shootout between Real Sociedad and PSV, where Real Sociedad needed to win to uh, pip PSV uh, to stay in, a, uh, in the Europa League and PSV would go to the Conference League. Um, and the game was rather open for most of the time until a penalty. And you know, it's one of those hand penalties. Yes, Mvene is sliding in and he's touching it with the hand very clearly. Uh, I understand by, by the rules, but I feel this is not a foul. This is not a real, it's not an intentional foul play. He got hit on the hand. Okay, so be it. Uh, Oyar Sabal uh, converts, and from that moment on, in a really wet conditions, let's put it that way, uh, Real Sade was, was the better team in the 62nd. Oyar Sabal converts um, second goal, and then late on, uh, and in, in, in between was a Sangare, yellow, red, again, the second yellow for he I think he hits the. Uh, Opponent in the, in his face, also one of those yellow cards. Yeah, maybe, but I was no mean and ill intent there. But then Solos makes it three nil, and Real Sociedad go through uh, in that group. Also, Sturm Graz from Austri Austria getting another point. Although I was a little bit lucky against Monaco, so uh, that 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 was a big one. However, I think all the main drama of the entire Europe of the entire evening was Group C, where uh, we had Napoli against Leicester and Lega against Spartak, with every team still having a chance to qualify. That was an amazing uh, onset to the whole uh, group, uh, which also, I mean, uh, ahead of the group, we said Na it's clearly Napoli, Leicester for first respond, the other ones are kind of cannon fodder. No, anything but. And it was more or less that. Either both games were also shootouts. Whoever wins the games is uh, through. The only interesting thing would have been that I mean with we with, with the Ross and uh, the Napoli Leicester game. I do that one first for a good reason. Delivered on many accounts. This was an amazing first half with Unas and Elmas. Uh, Giving Napoli a Tony lead, although Leicester having a very early, I think it was Kaka, because Castan was, was just cleared off the line uh, or blocked on the line, uh, could have given Leicester a lead. Leicester playing those ugly grey black pink jerseys that I cannot stand. But then uh, you think 2 0 lead and it's all smooth sailing for Napoli. No, 
uh, uh, Jay Evans uh, pulls one back and then uh, Dewsbury Hall uh, six six minutes later from far far out another great shot and it's two two and at that point I really thought that the game might fall uh, Leicester's way. However, in the second half, uh, Elmas with a great ball, but the way he gets the ball in the box, controls it, puts another foot and puts it in really nicely done. Puts Napoli three two in front and then Di Lorenzo. Uh, almost gifted Leicester and other goal. However, Madison could not convert. I mean, he plays it from the corner flag in, and Madison is clear. Or goal takes a shot. It hits the outside of the, of, of the post. With maybe a little bit more clinically finishing, Napoli could have made it 4-2, but there were also chances for Leicester to equalize. So this was a highly entertaining game with Napoli winning that one, and I was uh, personally very happy. Now, ideally, I wanted to have Leicester go through as well and the chance was there I did not expect it I thought it's either Leicester or Na Napoli but with a draw in Legia against Spartak it would have been possible Spartak took an early through Bakaev um, in a game that was played with many many spec spectators although there was only 50% vaccination uh, ratio in Poland which boggles the mind in many ways um, so uh, Spartak Moscow controls the game I do like those black jerseys, I have to say, with the red. And we're largely the better side, but in the second half, Legia, who is actually in the league not very good, really came back storming and had a few chances, and they got the big one with a, a contentious penalty call. I mean, they look at VAR, and I thought, yeah, if you need to look at that, it's probably not one. Peckhardt steps up, and the goalie saves it, and that was a vital save because with the draw Leicester would have gone through that way Sparta go through and I know that Poland would have loved to see a Russian team out I'm pretty sure about that so but they so Sparta because of the head-to-head -head against Napoli they have six points against Napoli they're the group winners and Napoli have to go in the playoffs so very very interesting group Leicester have to go to the conference league uh, Eintracht Frankfurt secured their first space with a draw against Fenerbahce. That was enough for them to, to secure it. And Olympiakos even lose uh, to Royal and, uh, Antwerp. So uh, that took care of that. Then in the, um, uh, in Group E, uh, Lazio and Galatasaray a rather dreary nil-nil draw. Uh, so that there, there was not much. And Marseille also get the win over Lok. Well, you know, they, they shouldn't lose and uh, move on in the, conf in, in, in the conference league. Braga and Chevena, Zvezda and uh, Raska against Midtjylland was also, I mean, there was a three-way battle for the two top spots. Braga and Chevena, Zvezda only play a 1-1 one -one draw, penalties for each. However, it is enough to see both of them go through. Chevena, Zvezda being the um, group winners, because Midtjylland cannot break down Ludo Gorenz. If Midtjylland would have, would, have, would have won that one, they would actually have won the group. It was that, uh, just a goal away. Uh, Celtic and Spade is a highly entertaining game. 3-2 uh, win for Celtic. I think they, three times took a lead, Spade is called equalized twice. Missed tons of chances. So it was a little bit of a lucky win. And Ferenc Varsch get also a bit of a lucky win, but the only first and only win in the group stage uh, over Leverkusen, a team that was already qualified. And as I said, they are second favorite. And I know a Leverkusen shirt is probably... Should enter my collection sooner or later, despite me not really liking them, but you know. They are good. <laughs> but last season it was the same thing, where I thought uh, I need Leverkusen, and then they crashed out of the Europa League uh, very, very early on, and so there was no need to get a Leverkusen churches in the Bundesliga, they also fell out. Uh, from the Austrian perspective, a very... Um, in, uh, a very joyous result, with Rapid winning 1-0 at, Gen at Genk, in the first half, Rapid was really playing well, something we haven't seen. I mean, they have a new coach with Ferdinand Feldhofer, and uh, although he's only there for two weeks, you could already see there is some patterns of play that actually make sense, and it was very ent ent entertaining. They should have scored er earlier, but if you see the winning goal by Ljubicic, the um, first a deep ball, then Schick with a very tem nicely temperated, weighted pass into Ljubicic, who from outside of the box yanks it in, in, into the corner. Second half, yeah, they needed to fight, but they hung on. I did not think that they have that fight in them. Uh, and it's very rare that an Austrian team beats a Belgian team. So I have to give extend my congratulations to Rapid because that is something I did not expect. They go into the conference and Genk is out. This is a major result. And uh, I think this is for the first time ever, as far as I remember, that three Austrian teams make it 
um, to uh, through the winter, so out of the group stage uh, in Europe. This is a pretty big result for Europe as well. And I have to see when I look at the opponents, Statscast will come for, uh, for, for Rapid. There are draws in there where Rapid actually could advance and I would expect them to ad advance. So that's on top. Um, Dinamo Zagreb, not only with the Rapid result, but also themselves do enough to secure a second spot. Wonderful goal by Orsic uh, against a B-side of West Ham. Uh, more, more or less or, or, or in the fourth minute more or less the same spot that West Ham scored the winner against Chelsea but it was a m way more beautiful goal because it didn't go to near but to the far corner it was an absolute beauty that one so that much for the Europa League in the Europa Conference yes Lusk the uh, game went, went ahead there was loads of sn snowfall in the south of Austria but the field was clear but it was kind, 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 kind of muddy so they needed to uh, adjust to the conditions Helsinki has, has well said they have not played um, their season is over for a month already so they had to play the last games in the Europe Europe by not being competitive which is definitely a disadvantage and you could see they had a good chance early on but uh, the, as long as the game went on last became better Hussein Balic gives them the lead they already hit the crossbar before uh, in the 41st and then uh, two more goals in the second half through Nakamura and then uh, lay, lay down the probably the previous goal really nice uh, cross in by Hava and Gruber can head, head in that cross was really nice really really nice and it's a 3-0 win for Lask who could switch around a lot of players so and I hope that means we can get a win at Austria Vienna on the weekend because that would be more, more, more important uh, just one more thing to Lask I have to say that I want to add they got I think they have of all the group um, groups in Europe Lask has the, by far the best record 16 points no, I mean uh, they are in championship but 16 points is only one conceded that's an outstanding record, at least in the Europa League and the Europa Conference League. Uh, and they have made 16 points in the Conference League and 17 in the league. So you can see the disparity, uh, disparity there in performances. And I know it's, I think, there's a whole lot down to the Thursday, Sunday rhythm. But it also has to be said that I think um, in Europe, the opponents are not yet used to the way Lask is playing. And I think Lask at the moment is anyway soul-searching. Uh, the style that they are playing. Uh, whereas in Austria, people already know very well how to uh, address uh, the last game. And in addition, it has to be said, this group with Maccabi Tel Aviv, Alash Gerd and uh, um, Helsinki is no comparison. I think neither, maybe Maccabi Tel Aviv would play in the Austrian league. And for me, this is a really tough thing to say. Because I always assumed the Austrian league is small, but uh, the Austrian league, I think they are now number eight in points collected uh, in this European season. The Austrian league is one of the better ones in Europe at the moment, which to me is mind boggling in many, many, in many ways. So uh, the opponents clearly were not on par with what uh, Lask is usually facing in the Austrian league. Uh, Partisan in Group B with a 1 1 anorthosis uh, gets also uh, through. There were a few nerves because Anathos could well have snatched the winner later on. They were, but they were down, um, but then it was possible. But in, in the end, Partizan came through. Very surprising, it has to be said, that Roma actually won the group uh, because Bode uh, get um, a concede. Uh, no, um, um, Soria gets a lead through Nazariana. Uh, Bode get an equalizer, however, they cannot find, find a win, and that's what they would have needed because Roma in Sofia, a snowy Sofia, uh, got a comfortable 3 0 lead through Tammy Abraham. Uh, Majoral uh, very nicely uh, played back hill pass, and then again, Tammy Abraham, 53rd minute. You think the game is done, is, is done and dusted. Oh, however, CSK come back. Uh, Zakanovic in the 775th, and then deep in stoppage, will shoot, give them a 2 3, and they were pushing for the equalizer there. So, Roma again, not convincing at all, but they win the group, a group they probably never expected to win because Bodo really destroyed them in Norway. 6-1 is one of those results. Uh, Randers make it through to uh, thanks to Cluj winning against uh, Jablonets. I mean, they 
had the draw from almost the time, concede late, uh, but uh, they find themselves through, which I think is a nice story that uh, another Danish team makes it. Uh, in Group E, Slavia Praha get the 1-1 against Union. Most of the time they were the better team. They take the lead through Schranz in the 50th. Um, Union then get an equalizer, but never really could move forward. Another weird thing they had to play, of course, in the Olympiastadion, because the Alte Försterei is a stadium that is three quarters only standing room which at UEFA is not allowed. And then due to Corona restriction, there were only 5,000 people allowed in an 80,000 arena. So already not so great. Uh, but then they were all put in two blocks, which Corona distancing rules, yeah, weird. In any case, Slavia uh, move on, probably deservedly so. Uh, in Group F, Pauk get the important win over the Lincoln Red Imps and Copenhagen also uh, gives Pauk some help by winning against Slo Slovan 2-0. Uh, so I'm very happy that Pauk also made it through, although the result doesn't look as convincing. Now we have also an international incident with Spurs seemingly unilaterally declaring that they cannot play against Stadren. Um, and Vitesse had to play against Mura, and there's of course a head to head between a hot uh, between Spurs and Vitesse, where Spurs actually needed to win in order to secure uh, advancing, and then it is down to goal difference. Now, uh, as I hear, they had only 10 players, and of course they cannot play, so I understand that. Uh, the optics of the whole thing did not look right with Spurs, just, just kind of, we cannot play, and UEFA is not informing, it was Spurs informing. I think this is what uh, pissed everyone off. Ren absolutely not happy, they said this uh, game need to be forfeited, not postponed. And the other thing is they immediately did not, did not agree to have him played next week. Um, and there, uh, there is a 31st December deadline where the game has to be played. So it's very curious if and when this game can be played. And it's a very unfortunate situation, especially if we test. I mean, at the first half, they had a 3-0 lead and you, uh, they needed goals, 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 goals. But they had to have this even between all those two. The 3 0 lead would be more or, or good. Make it 4 4 5 and really give Spurs something to play for. Uh, however, they can see the late one. So, in a way, if Spurs just win uh, by 1 0 or 2 0, well, 1 0 is enough. They are through. And that's kind of a little bit. It has a foul taste to Obio because I think both games needed to be postponed. If you ask me, but you know, their scheduling is rather, rather, rather tough. And then another scandal uh, was that there was no, uh, there is no VAR in the Europa League. Karabakh at Basel had a very early goal that was cleared like a meter and a half behind the line. It was not given. Karabakh having many chances. I mean, if you read the foul score and three 0 it looks like uh, Basel were rolling over. No, any, any, anything but it could have been two or three 0 in the first half for Karabakh. Uh, but then Basel came back, Arthur Kazami, and uh, I think again Arthur, uh, yeah, uh, Lele Le Le making the convincing scoreline. But I think it was Karabakh then really devastated by the 3 0, uh, by uh, the early misses by the refs. So I already hinted it in, at it during the video. There will be a stats cast where you can see also uh, the pots for the playoff draw and also the probabilities of who will win and also who are now the favorites in, in, in the Europa League. I'd quickly, Roma ahead of Feyenoord, ahead, ahead of Stadren are the top three. So I'm very happy that three Conference League teams are actually the favorites in there because they already have moved on. Uh, so yeah, that's nice to see as well. In any case, I would like to know what you thought about uh, the action in the Europa League and the Conference League. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!